400 gig is finally here. At Pearl Labs, we're very excited about this new technology, but we also recognize that careful consideration is required for a successful migration to 400 gig. This is the first part of our two part series, so make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for the second episode. Now I'd like to introduce our very own global product line manager, Ray Hagen, who's going to give you a full walkthrough of 400 gig architectures and everything you need to know about them. Hi, my name is Ray Hagen. I'm the global product line manager for Pro Labs. We're here today to talk about 400 gig architectures and what you need to know as you deploy 400 gig. Our agenda today is to discuss, you know, a few key themes. Our four foundations where we talk about modulation, form factors, interfaces, connectors, things that are really critical to deploying 400 gig. We look forward to that, applying that to real world networks and data centers and service providers. How are the real practical things you need to know as you deploy 400 gig? And we'll also talk a bit about what's beyond 400 gig, what lies beyond. So we look to our 400 gig foundations and here's where we really want to talk about hows and the whys of why things developed the way they did and what does that mean to you? So as the 400 gig standards were developing, there was a, quite frankly, a lot of competing standards at work. So there were things like optical standards, how are those gonna work out? There were, you know, how's this gonna roll down to 100 gig? Then also, what form factors would be used for 400 gig transceivers? OSFP, QSFP, DD, even MU, QSFP, DSFP, SFP, DD, CFP8 were all standards that were in the queue, ready to go for 400 gig. And then to take that kind of alphabet soup, if you will, to the next level, there's a whole host of new connector types that were also being introduced with 400 gig. So you've got your MPO12, MPO16, your standard duplex LC and a new CS connector that were all introduced that really um, add a lot of complexity to a 400 gig de deployment. So if we look at our 400 gig foundations um, and form factors, there were really three form factors that bubbled to the top um, that you know switches were developed to around CFP8, the OSFP, and the QSFP 56DD connector. The real differences here what really is in the power and the heat and thermal management, if you will. QSFP 56DD uses a little less power, has an indirect thermal management, meaning that it's a little more advantageous for the switch providers or when they're developing switches and routers around these transceivers to be able to you know, utilize the same um, thermal management components they use for the QSFP 2800 gig technology. So hence the QSFP 56DD Otherwise, uh, we're going to be calling it moving forward here as the QSFP DD form factor has been, uh, I guess, crowned, if you will, as the winner of the form factor battle, if there is such a battle. The other two um, form factors perhaps are not going away. I think there's going to be a market for these as we look to beyond 400 gig. But right now, this is going to be the uh, QSFP 56 DD is the is the, the winner, if you will. So even though we think we had a clear winner within that QSFP DD form factor, there's still some variation, if you will. There are actually three different hardware types, type one, type two, and type two A. The type two transceiver is the perhaps the most commonly deployed today. I think the real difference there is just the size. It, it protrudes a bit further out from the faceplate than the type one. The type one is a little closer in size to the, the standard QSFP 2800 gig transceiver. And uh, to probably oversimplify the reasons why it just, you know, you need to I guess, put more components into a package, you may need a little bit extra space there. The Type 2A is a newer addition to it um, to take care of thermal management. I believe that's gonna be in relation to upcoming uh, 400 gig ZR um, things down the road. So it needs a different, uh, needs a heat sink on the top of it to, to take care of the thermal management down the road. Uh, on top of that, uh, there is a common management information system used with uh, these transceivers and this, uh, Believe it or not, there are two two revisions of this out there in the market today. And uh, quite frankly, if you're a, a consumer of 400 gig transceivers to deploy in your switches and routers and other network elements, you don't really need to worry about this a whole lot. I think where, where it's going to come into play for you is when, if you're where you're consuming your technology, if you're buying from a, a third party supplier, you may need to ask a question, which CMI, CMIS are you using? And make sure that's the same CMIS that your OEM is using. So then we move on to modulation. 
And PAM4 um, modulation is perhaps the biggest change here with 400 gig that networks are going to find opposed to you know, the 100 gig migration a few years ago. So PAM4 is a generational shift in optical networking. It has far reaching impact, far beyond 400 gig. It goes all the way to 200 gig and 100 gig. It's gonna impact each section of your network once you deploy PAM4. So what does that mean? So from non-return to zero encoding, so that's a, a one step, if you will, encoding um, algorithm where you're simply going up and down to a PAM4, which is a four step demonstrated here by the graph. And uh, how this is manifested, if you will, is in the optical signal. You can see by the eye diagrams on the uh, right hand side of the slide that uh, you can see both steps in a NRZ eye diagram on top. And at the bottom, you can see all four steps in the PAM4 eye diagram. So again, this is gonna be a fundamental shift in how um, transceivers are deployed for 400 gig. And as you look to um, do to the applications of the um, aggregation and breakouts and how everything rolls from the edge into the core. So we'll get into that, all those in our application section. So where PAM4 has a big impact is on the transceiver interfaces. We've got the available interfaces on the multi-mode side, the SR8, and that uses a new MPO16 connector, a max of 100 meters. On the electrical side, it has eight by 50 PAM4 electrical signaling, whereas on the optical side, it also has eight by 50 PAM4 um, optical signaling. And these are eight, eight transmit, eight receive pairs um, in that fiber connection. We're moving to the, the single mode side. You know, we have a couple of uh, MPO type connectors or parallel type modules. Um, transceivers, the DR4 and the DR4 Plus. You know, these transceivers use the MPO12 connector, much like we've accustomed to for um, for uh, breakout um, connections over the years. But you know, for the 500 meter and two kilometer reaches. Now, where things get interesting here is with the FR4 and LR4. You know, these are used duplex LCs. And again, these are still four by 100 optical on the PAM4 side, but these multiplex those four lanes onto the single fiber for their connection. All these, all these transceivers are all eight by 50 gig PAM4 on the electrical side. So as we look at what's next, right? For these developing 400 gig interfaces, there's a number of them. You've got your PLR, PLR4, which is a four by 100 LR. So basically the same as a DR4 and DR4 plus, except for a 10 kilometer reach. Then you get to SR4.2 on the multi-mode side, which is uh, trying to take the place of a quote unquote bi-die connection. I'm um, using the um, MPO12 type connector, gonna have a transmit and receive on a single multi-mode fiber. And this is where, you know, one five fiber is gonna come in handy here for this particular connection. Then there's a few other, um, interfaces that perhaps have actually been around for a while, FR8 and LR8. And the only real difference here, in, in my opinion, is on the implementation between these and the FR4 and the LR4. On the um, optical side, you're multiplexing eight 50 gig connections um, using LAN WDM opposed to CWDM, full, CWDM on the other connections. So it's a bit of a implementation um, change there. Um, but those two interfaces, you know, I, I, DR, I'm sorry, an FR8 and FR4, you know, obviously are not interoperable. So just something to keep in mind as you're deploying your, your transceiver technology. Then you've got the ZR on the 400 gig. Now this is um, something you're gonna see over the next year um, come to market. And this is gonna be a one by 400 gig coherent DWDM technology. So this is pretty exciting, right? This is where we're gonna have, you know, real change for um, long haul networking and beyond and from the core to the edge. Um, this is gonna be a big change over the next year or so. So as we move on, you know, we've got a slide up here with a bunch of 100 gig and 200 gig transceivers. You may say, hey, this is a 400 gig, what you need to know, why are we talking about 100 gig? Well, that's a really great question. And I think the real reason why here is that 400 gig is gonna be deployed mainly you in the core up front and in the main core of the network. So you're gonna to need to roll up or aggregate or break out to whatever term you wanna use your 100 gig connections into that 400 gig. So we talked about PAM4 and networking. 
Here's where that be becomes far reaching into the 100 gig and 200 gig world. So the DR1, FR1, and LR1, these are single wavelength optical technologies. Sing one by 100 PAM4 optically. But on the electrical side, they are all four by 25 NRZ, QSP 28 transceivers, meaning that these transceivers can um, be installed in legacy QSP 28 100 gig switches deployed in the network today. You know, these transceivers help integrate those legacy switches into your new 400 gig network. So we move on to our 2 by 100 gig QSFP 28 DD transceivers. Now, these are a little different transceivers. As you can see by the specs on the slide, they are NRZ both on the copper side or electrical side and on the electrical or on the optical side. So as we get into the applications where these are hit, where these are used, we'll get to understand why someone would want these types of transceivers. And then the final transceiver in the slide here is a dual Lambda um, QSFP28 PAM4 transceiver. And this is a PAM4 dual Lambda, um, means it's 250 gig DWDM on the same fiber. So this is a, a different type of transceiver today used in a QSFP28 type environment as well. Now, these single Lambda 100 gig QSFP28 transceivers so these transceivers, um, as we mentioned, these, these are really critical in, in integrating legacy 100 gig um, infrastructure into the new 400 gig network. Now, what makes these a little different is um, inside the transceiver, there's a gearbox. And in this gearbox, it does the retiming from, from one by 100 PAM4 to four um, by 25 NRZ. And that retiming is, is critical to the um, to making it interoperate with the switch. Now inside this gearbox is also a DSP. And this DSP contains a uh, forward air correction. That forward air correction works with uh, the 400 gig transceiver on the other end without need for FEC or FEC on the host. So FEC is done on both this transceiver and its 400 gig um, subtender on the other end very much a something you need to know as you're deploying 400 gig. I like to think of this, and again, I'm probably oversimplifying it, but I look at the two by 100 gig as a, you know, two NRZ transceiver ho transceivers in one housing. So, so let's think about that. Meaning that inside that QSFP 28 DD transceiver, essentially are two working QSFP 28 LR4 or two QSFP 28 CWDM force. So that's an interesting way of looking at it. And that's how I, helps me rationalize how this, why this matters in the network. Now how this works, as you can see from the, the slide there, a QSFP DD transceiver has two sets of pins. Same pins that work with uh, legacy QSFP 28, then a whole nother set of, of almost identical pins on the other side of the piece of the print circuit board that allow it to essentially work two independent transceivers within one. And, and when you say that, what do you mean two independent transceivers? Well, um, this particular transceiver integrates the CS connector. Um, I mentioned that's one of the new connector types. So a CS connector essentially is two transmit and receive fiber cores, if you will, within the space of one LC connector. So those of us who are around in, uh, for a long time, like myself, we remember when the LC connector came to market and it doubled the density over existing you know, SC connectors where you know, two LCs, a transmit receive pair fit in the space of one SC connector. Now, same thing is going on with the CS connector where one CS connector is fitting in the space of one LC connector. So being on the face of this QSFP 28DD transceiver, there are two transmit and receive pairs using CS connectors, allowing for this you know, independent operation of two by 100 gig um, transceivers. The QSFP DD 200 gig, now these are um, evolving standards. Um, they use PAM4 and eight by 25 gig, four by 50 gig. There's a number of different uh, thoughts out there right now how these are gonna, how this is gonna shake out. I think, uh, over the next year, we're going to see many more 200 gig transceivers under the market. These are going to be in various PAM4 varieties, but again, still very much um, you know, developing um, as of today. So 
you know, as we talked about connectors being a, a big, uh, big deal with the QSFP 28DD connectors, we move on to, you know, the rest of the 400 gig transceivers and what connectors do they use? The SR8, as we mentioned, uh, uses the MPO16. It has eight transmit, eight receive pairs, as we can see by this slide. The DR4, DR4 Plus, and PLR4 will use the MPO12, and they'll have four transmit and receive pairs, um, very similar to the same scheme used in uh, QSFP Plus and QSFP28 modules um, you know, for the last several years. The QSFP DD FR4 and LR4 again use the du duplex LC connectors, the standard LC connectors. Thank you so much for watching this video. For more info on 400 gig and 400 gig products, the appropriate links are down below. Again, this is the first part of a two part series. So make sure you subscribe to the channel for the second episode, which is going to be more about the real world applications of 400 gig. Thanks again and stay connected for the next video.